Welcome to Combat Sports Talk, a podcast dedicated to UFC and Bellator discussion, the MMA community, and combat sports in general. I'm your host, Ryan Smith, and joining me this week is the man who had a close encounter with certain death, KC <laughs> Onyebuchi, what and up, the man who completed the Avengers in Game of Thrones challenge, John Keyes. And I didn't need to pee at all for like eight hours. Yes, you are a camel. Yes, apparently. And I'm stressed because I, I, <laughs> anybody who did that, <clears throat> excuse me, anybody who did that, you know, God bless you. Um, you are a strong-willed person. I, I know you probably needed a hug afterwards or, you know, some Xanax. I couldn't sleep. You know, I was, I was, I was crying in my pillow, but it was tears of joy. But. All right. So let's get into this. KC had a close encounter with certain death. Tell us about the story. Right out the gate. (laughs) Yes. So right out the gate. All right. Well, as you guys may have noticed on the show, Ryan loves to talk trash. And I'm less of a trash talker. Uh, Unfortunately, Ryan decided to talk trash on my behalf to Anthony Lionheart Smith and, uh, I train out of Factory X, and Anthony Smith is very frequently there. So Ryan said something to the effect that I wanted to fight him. (laughs) And I didn't see it until, like, the next day. And so I see that Anthony Smith has liked that post on Instagram. And I'm like, oh, no, what have you done? (laughs) So, I mean, I'm in good shape, but not good enough to shape uh fight the uh number one contender so i'm out there and i'm boxing and i'm sparring with um one of my partners and out of the corner of my eye i see anthony and he throws a jab at me and he's like oh you want to fight and i've run into celebrities a ton in my life just with my cousins of the nfl and friends so i'm i'm not starstruck ever but there's a difference between like starstruck and a dude who can literally beat you to death and I, I had a moment where I, I forgot how to use words for a second, and I'm pretty sure I almost soiled myself. Like <laughs> I saw my entire life flash before my eyes, and I was like, I gotta make some changes. Like I gotta do. Some- so, so, so basically, what you're saying is Anthony Smith came up to you and said, "You want some of this, old man?" <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, he became the man in the mirror. (laughs) Mad respect to Anthony. He was hella cool about it, but I I literally almost shat myself. It it was not a great day. It was not a great day. (laughs) All right. So what we have learned from this is that if KC ever makes me mad, then I just got to take to Twitter and start calling out Factory X fighters. Oh, man. (laughs) Just get me whooped for no reason. (laughs) No reason. You call out. Uh, I can see myself literally like Carmen Sage and all the other ones who are out there. Like the females at Factory X could do work on me. So you mean like Macy Barber? He says it right for the first time. Yes, she's got hands though. I wouldn't put it past her. I one hundred percent believe she could take me. But you kind hey, like that. Okay, good. you kind of like that one. I've yeah. never enjoyed a whooping in my life. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. I... There, oh there, there is yourself. no pleasurable <laughs> whipping. I just, I just can't think of one. It's like, so. oh, she broke my arm, yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, but at least she like signed that. my cast. <laughs> Anywho, oh. so don't do that to me again. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. I promise I won't do that with, um, with, with cousin Anthony. Uh, anywho. All right. It was the first of two war weekends in a row where Bellator and UFC went head to head, this time on the same night, on DAZN, that's D A Z N, DAZN, pay per view. Which Bellator that? held the next round of the Welterweight Grand Prix, where Rory, the Red King McDonald, put his title on the line against former World Series of Fighting champion. John Fitch and in the UFC Jack Hermanson took a short notice fight against one of the most dangerous fighters at middleweight Jacare Souza who if he won the fight was promised a shot at the middleweight title but let's take a look at all the action on the official decision
the official decision. This is the official decision. This is where we look at the fights that were on last week. This was a war weekend. Both fights were on Saturday night. One was a pay-per-view. The other one was on ESPN+. Plus. Let's look at Bellator 220, McDonald versus Fitch, April 27th, 2019, at the SAP Arena, or SAP Center, in San Jose, California. There were four fights on the card, one of which was the next round of the Welterweight Grand Prix. Phil, Mr. Wonderful Davis, defeated Liam McGarry via submission due to strikes. Now, that's something that you don't normally see is a fighter who is getting punched who taps out. The last one that I remember of a fighter get tapping out due to strikes, even though they didn't call it, you know, I think the official line was a TKO. But I mean, saw it. Fighting? KC saw it. Do you remember what you, what, which one it was? Yeah, it was when you and I fought in Dallas. No, because I, I I still have all of the proof that uh, that I won that fight. Hey, it is an official job. win. You are still defeated on your official record in boxing. <laughs> However, um, I was talking about the Joanna Young uh Rose Thug No Hair Nama Yunus uh, first fight, where um, it uh, appeared that she tapped oh. out due to strikes, even though they called it a TKO. Uh, Phil Davis caught uh, Leo McGarry with a left, straight left, right on the chin. It's likely that that punch broke Leo McGarry's jaw, uh, so he tapped due to strikes in the third round. Ben Henderson defeated Adam Piccolotti via split decision. He's back to his winning ways, Ben Henderson. You remember back in the UFC, he won almost all of his fights by like split decision, uh, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat almost every time. So it looks like he is back in his normal form. Elima McFarlane defeated Veda Ortega via TKO in round three. John, was that the most brutal elbow you have ever seen? Yes. Um, the only other injury that I've ever seen inflicted on another person was uh, GSP to, got, to Josh Koscheck when he broke his orbital. I mean, it was it's, pro- it's far, by far and wide the most devastating blow I've ever seen in women's MMA. Uh, probably. Women's. Like, I, I've never seen the, – the, the only other time that I've seen an Cyborg. elbow land and cut a gash as deep – you can't even call it a gash. You got to call it a crevasse. It's yes. so deep. Um, Nerd. It was when <laughs> BJ Penn landed that strike on Diego Sanchez. Diego Sanchez finally worked his way up to a title shot, fought BJ Penn for the lightweight title, and BJ Penn whooped him from pillar to post. And then, like in the fourth round um, or fifth round, he landed this elbow on Diego Sanchez's forehead. And just cre- just carved a Grand Canyon right in the middle of his skull. It was gross. Yeah, I, when I saw her skull, I, I mean, when I saw her, her forehead, I didn't know if I was looking at skull or tissue. To be quite honest. Oh man! I'll, one thing, it was raining blood. Whatever. Oh it was. yeah. Um, I mean, there's been worse. We we can't talk about elbows and and head injuries without talking about cyborgs, brain cranium. Uh, oh, the crushed. cranium! Yeah, the cranium crunch by MVP. Yeah, that was yeah, bad. I mean, that's the worst knee that's ever happened in all period <laughs> in <laughs> all of combat sports. So you know, uh, yeah, that, yeah, definitely, definitely myself. I'm just saying, in women's MMA, that was that was the worst. It was pretty I've brutal. Yeah. Well, all suffice it to MMA, say, yeah. they brought in the doctor. The doctor t- took a look at it and was like, "No mas, you're done," and they waved <laughs> off the fight. And in the main event of the evening, Rory, the Red King McDonald. I don't think you can call it a win because it was a majority draw. John Fitch won on the last card. But because Rory McDonald is the reigning welterweight champion, they allowed him to go on into the next round. Now, for me, I watched this fight. Rory McDonald won three rounds to two in my book. Really, I, I would say he won four rounds to one, but I could give I could give Fitch two rounds in this fight. Um, it was a slow fight. Like I was, mm-hmm. I I was you know to quote uh, Rory McDonald's mentor uh, George St Pierre, I was not impressed by the performance. Um, 
it, it just it was slow and and Fitch did five rounds of takedown and takedown attempts. Rory McDonald's uh, jujitsu guard was too good and very very few strikes actually landed. Rory got cut, but maybe ten percent of the strikes that John Fitch threw actually had some oomph on it. Most of them were just kind of those those pity pity pat strikes that you have to do in order to keep the position before they stand you up. So I wasn't very impressed. I think Rory McDonald deserved to move on in the in the in the competition, but it 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 really wasn't that entertaining of a fight from my perspective. John, do you, do you have anything to add to that? Um you know, just to add that John Fitch is not known for, you know, his fast, brutal attacks. He's actually known to be a grinder and not a puncher. He's a he's a wrestler by nature. So that's what you that's what I was expecting out of that fight. Was not impressed at all. You know, never leave it in the hands of the judges, I say, if you want if you want to win. So it is what it is. All right. UFC on ESPN, Jacare versus Hermanson. On April 27, 2019, at the BB&T Center in Sunrise, Florida, there were five fights on the card. Corey Sanhagen defeated John Lineker via split decision. Corey Sanhagen is a an up-and-coming fighter fighting against a veteran in John Lineker. John, hands of stone, Lineker deserves that name. He throws some bombs. He just was way too short and didn't have enough reach, kind of like KC when he fights me. Um, and he just wasn't able to land the big shot. And so, therefore, Corey Sanhagel came out with the win, and uh, he moves on up the ladder, fighting bigger competition. Glover Teixeira, back in the win column against, now get this, we called him Eon, um, or Ion, last week. But his name, the correct pronunciation of his name is Iwan Kutalaba. Iwan. Can you see that? It's I O N, but it's Iwan. Okay. Yeah. No, I won. I won. Well, guess no, what? He I didn't won. won. He, he lost. And see, I lost. Sleep. People sleep on Glover's ground game, okay? I really wish people would stop doing it. Do not just because this man loves to stand up and grind, he has a fair ground game if you underestimate him. All right. He will submit you. All right. That's that's what he gets. Yeah. I won. You know, goodness. Yeah. I won the thing about him that I didn't like is that he is that guy that's a big dude and he's strong and he can fight and he knows this and he's got all this confidence in the world, so he walks around like he's you know the cock of the block, and he, I just, I just, he just gave, rubbed me the wrong way. I didn't like the way he just acted and behaved. Mm-hmm. So I was rooting for Glover to share it. And and man, they were throwing big bombs in the first round. Yeah, they and were. then after he weathered the storm, I went slow down just enough. Glover was able to land a big bomb, rock him a little bit, take him down. Next thing you know, submission, and it is over. So hats off to Glover to share. Good job making light work of the up and comer. I won. Platinum Mike Perry got back in the win common uh, column versus Alex the Cowboy Oliveira. He won versus unanimous uh, via unanimous decision. You know, I have to admit, Mike Perry actually looked pretty good, man. That dude. Yeah, this was a good. It was a good fight for him. It was a great fight. You want to talk about this one, KC? Yeah, go ahead. Nope. He, I mean, he he looked I mean, a lot really action. good. I mean, he just okay. just throwing bombs. He was relentless. Um, he was all over the place. Alex Oliveira just could not contain uh, with the power that Mike Perry was delivering. I I. It was a good fight. It's hard for him. to root for Platinum, but the whole time it it did seem very clear that the Mike had this this fight in hand. Like yeah. He, he was just the better fighter that day, but it's hard to root for that man. Like yeah. you're you know almost what? hoping Alex can find something to end this fight. Yeah, but nothing, dude. I, you know what? It, it, you're right. It is hard to root for Platinum Mike Perry for all the right reasons, but you gotta respect this man just for the simple fact that they were both dancing to music on the way in. Okay, when 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 if you had watched the, the when they were doing the walk in. When Cowboy came in with his walk-in music, Platinum is up there sitting up there doing a dance-off with them right there while while he was getting ready. So I was like, this is going to be an entertaining fight from the get-go. And it was. I mean, 
you know, say what you want to say about Platinum Mike Perry. I think he's going to mature just right, and he's mm. going to become a really good fighter. Dude's going to mature when he's retired. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like Mike Perry is quickly going to become one of those guys who, who he has legal trouble. Something's going to happen. CTE sets in. There's, I, I don't see his trajectory going great. No, no. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, we'll celebrate his victory. Um, he did a great job this week. Just stop acting a fool, Mike, and you might get three new fans. Greg Hardy, <laughs> back in the octagon after his disqualification for illegal strike, defeated Dmitry Smolikov via TKO in round one. Guys, Greg Hardy's got crazy power, dude. Like, Kanye West wrote a song about it. Oh, really? No That's one not- man should have all that power. It's crazy how much power greg hardy has so i thought because of his illegal strikes that he would probably get slowed down just be in his head a bit but he clearly just let loose like he he's he's a true brawler and that was that was that was a fight that wasn't mma that was just straight greg hardy fighting yeah it was dimitri smolikov is a wrestler and he was like okay i'm gonna take (laughs) i'm going to take this football player down and uh I can't do it. I, you know, I try, but I can't. Do Your it. voices are so good. I've decided to not do them because when you attempt, it is hilarious. <laughs> like right. your George Saint Pierre, even though you speak French, that was atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm sick. I'm fighting this 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 cold. So yeah, you know, my George Saint Pierre yeah, is not is though. not on like, point. <laughs> if Rocky Balboa was doing an impression of GSP, that's what that was. Yeah. I'm not impressed by your performance. Okay. All right. I just want you to say, I just want you to say Ricky Bobby just one time while you hit your French accent. <laughs> Ricky Bobby. <laughs> hey, but I, I I gave you guys the Macy Barber. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're All right. Machine. And in the main event of the evening, Jack Hermanson defeated Jacare Souza via unanimous decision. Dude was all over Jacare. Like it, Jacare looked like average dude. Yeah. No. He looked pretty average, man. I I vehemently disagree. He looked like a guy who was saving himself for a big shot. But yeah. he was never in a whole lot of trouble throughout the fight. Hermanson's just had nonstop gas tank. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that this was truly being outclassed. Jacare Souza has only been taken down once. Like that's that's yeah. the you take Jacare down once you like write home about it. Jack Hermanson in a late fight replacement. Let's not forget this guy was a late fight replacement. Took Jacare Souza down three times, held him down, beat him up. Beat him up all over the place. Like by the time it was over, Jacare was like, "Let me, let me out of the ring. Just, just let me out. Let me go sit down. I need to sit down." Before Jacare started bleeding at all. Yeah, it was like third or fourth round before he started. Yeah, so let's not say that it was. So Hermanson looked amazing. Yes, he 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 was bouncing around constantly. He had great action start to finish. He he knew what he needed to do on on his feet. He he kept his range incredibly well. And then on the uh, on the ground, like of course the 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 three takedowns. But that is not to take away from Jacare's like his combinations were working. He just had a tough time getting inside. And Hermanson was doing a great job of countering that that too. So I, I don't know that Jacare got completely outclassed so much as he looked like a guy who was saving himself for the fifth and then never let loose in the fifth. Yeah. yeah. The, the, I mean, I mean, oh, go, oh, ahead. go ahead. Well, I was going to say that, yeah, it just looked like that, you know, with it being a late a late fight replacement, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a toss-up, and it's a heartbreaker because I really wanted Jacare to go for the belt. I really wanted that. And it was a heartbreaker to see this happen, but you know, hands off, hands up, you know, hats to, off. To, yeah, hats off. Excuse me, uh, to uh, Jack Hermanson, the Joker. Um, he had an endless gas tank. He was going for it, and yeah. I mean, that's mad props in my book. All right. Well, you know, the only thing I got to say about Jack Hermanson is. I'm on that hype train. I am on that hype train. I did not believe that he was going to do what he did to Jacare Souza. Now I am on the hype train. Jack Hermanson, that guy has a bright future in the UFC. I can't wait. 
to see what he does next. All right, that is it for the official decision. Now it's time to look at the headlines that are making waves in the MMA world with Finding the Angles. Finding the Angles. This is Finding the Angles. This is where we look at the topics that people are talking about this week in the MMA world, the first story is off of the Bellator 220. Roy McDonald, main event versus John Fitch. In his post-fight comments, um, he said that his faith has changed his ability to hurt people. Uh, to quote him, he says, "I feel like God has really called me the last. Has really called me the last little while, and I don't know. He's changed my spirit." changed my heart and it takes a certain spirit to come in here and put a man through pain and stuff and i don't know if i have the same drive to hurt people anymore i don't know what it is but it's confusing i know the lord has something in store for me he was speaking to me in here tonight and i don't know it's a different feeling and so that really began to 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 cause me to begin to question as to whether or not Roy McDonald needed to have a future in the sport if he can't pull the trigger because of his deeply held beliefs, then maybe this sport is not right for him. Now, his coach today came out and said that Rory is not retiring, but these comments are concerning. Why are they concerning? I, I, <clears throat> just because he's not doesn't have that killer instinct doesn't mean he can't win. You need a killer instinct. I'm, I'm sorry that... I mean that is what makes that that's what you go from just sparring to being a you know a professional fighter in a cage is is having that killer instinct. I mean yes, you got to be able to turn I, that switch on. Uh so I think it's one of those where it, it's it's easy to say that you've got it and feel it right up until you realize that your opponent is truly hurt. So I've definitely been in, in situations where you're in a fight uh, you realize you've broken someone's arm or uh, in my case, uh, I tore someone's knee out uh, in jujitsu and, and we were going live like his I felt all of it pop. It ripped. He went to the hospital, has to do a bunch of surgeries to get that fixed. And after that, it's tough to go back onto the mat and clear that from your mindset. Because, yes, I want to compete at the highest level, but it's never my intention to do that level of bodily harm to someone. And it's just hard to get that mindset like you go in, it's fine until you start to feel a pop on your opponent. And then you're like, oh, I don't know if this is what I want to do. So yeah. I, I think it's easy to to sit back on the sidelines. But unless you've hurt someone to that degree and had to go to the hospital with them, which a lot of these fighters don't actually hate each other. They're in the same hospital room uh, afterwards. It's, it's not a great feeling. So the, the thing is, is that John Fitch was not injured in any way. I mean, very little damage actually took place. I mean, Rory came out the worst for wear with a cut over his eye. But there's something to be said about the fact that if his mind is not, if he's not in the moment, which is what he was communicating, then that not only puts his opponent at risk, that puts him at risk because he is not focused on what he's supposed to do. If he is, in to his to his point, if he's hearing the voice of God while he's fighting, that... I, I I I can't say that he is fully in the moment at that point. And so I, I I would be concerned if a fighter is telling me that he doesn't know if he if, if, if his job is to incapacitate his opponent and he's saying that he doesn't know if he can put someone through that, then that's a disconcerting thing. And what I can say is is that if we look at what Rory is going through and what Diego Sanchez, once he had his conversion, you know, these fighters begin to change, and at least in the short term, their ability to compete at the higher level changes. So uh, that, that's a small sample size because a lot of these other UFC fighters have um, very outspoken faith, um, and we, we don't see that same result. Like, Yoel Romero has no problem breaking someone's face. Uh, Johnny Hendricks pre-USADA. No problem hurting people. So I don't know that we can put this on. Generically speaking, uh, your your faith is the thing that slows you down in no, your career. But the, Maybe think, you just reach a point in your career where it's 
you're just not the same. The, 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 the key difference between the examples that I gave and the examples that you gave is that these fighters who came in that you gave had already had whatever, it, whatever their conversion was going to be. And their beliefs at that point had been reconciled with the job that they have to do. You know, we've got Michael Chandler here that he also commented after Rory McDonald said, he goes, I talk to God every day and he's completely fine with me beating the hell out of people. So clearly someone like Michael Chandler has a belief in God. However, he does not have the reservations that Rory McDonald is communicating. So there's something to be said about someone who has a, a strong faith who chooses to fight versus someone who recently has converted and is conflicted now about the job that they did before their conversion. And so I think that that's a different enough, a, a, a different enough um, situation to, 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 to parse Rory McDonald and say that he's different than uh, Yoel Romero and Johnny Hendricks pre USADA. All right. That's fair. But it, it's still one of those that it's early on. He's, he's still got his win. Uh, I say let his fighting do the talking, and it's not really our place to say, "All right, time to hang it up, Rory. You're not you're not willing to bludgeon people the way I want." I mean, if he can win, he can win, and I, I'm interested to see what happens next. I love that he he decided not to to throw in the towel. Well, I, I, all I'm saying is, is I'm concerned from him because if he's not in the moment, that puts him at risk. That I mean, at, at least as far as I know, that when I've heard fighters talk. They talk about the fact that you have to be in the moment, that you have to be fully committed to what you're doing. And if you're not fully committed to what you're doing in the ring, then you shouldn't be in the ring. It's not me talking that it's 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 what I've heard other fighters say. So this 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 con this conflict that I'm hearing Roy McDonald discuss says to me that he's not fully committed right now. That's all. I think the the more important question that we're that we're not seeing here is you know what Michael Chandler says. He says he talks to his God every day. Who is his God compared to you know Roy McDonald's God? I mean, Aries. Is he worshiping, you know, I was going to say, is it Aries or is it Dayhawk? Okay, I, <laughs> I need to know. I need to know these answers, people. You know, give give Michael give Michael Chandler on the phone. We need to know if he if he's worshiping Dayhawk. Okay, I need to know. All right. So from MMA fighting, Anderson Silva doesn't see any asterisks in his and John Jones's legacy after their doping cases. So uh, they were talking to Anderson Silva, and you know they really were asking, like, you know, you guys have done a lot of amazing things. You're considered to be two of the greatest fighters ever to walk ever to walk into an octagon. However, do you think that your legacies will be marred by the 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 doping? Uh, I don't know if you can call it conviction. Um, but the, the, the doping cases that they have both, um, been under. And he said, no, he said that they're effectively, he said that their legacy in the sport is, is really bigger than the doping cases that, uh, that they both have been, um, accused and, and, and proven to have, have committed. Anybody have any, any, any opinion on, on whether yeah. or not those careers should have asterisks or not? I've maintained that asterisks in sports are the most ridiculous thing ever because it's not like anyone actually says, nope, Anderson Silva, we don't consider him a fighter. Like it, the amazing things he had that he did in the ring still happen. Like he, he changed the game in being able to sh like showcase a skill set uh, and make just completely outclass someone like his, his stand up game. Ridiculous. His, his ground game. Ridiculous. No one takes that away from him. And, and you can't you throw the asterisk in there. But hands down, the bar for the best fighters always starts with Anderson Silva or John Jones in the modern era. The asterisk is a pointless concept. Most most people don't care about that. Well, what, do you, what do you think, John? Uh, the asterisks are needed. Um, they are there to show people. I mean, you're right. Okay, we saw we saw both men do amazing things in the ring. Um, like I said, nobody can 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 outclass Anderson Silva when you're walk when he did a backward walking punch and knocked somebody straight out. That <laughs> yeah, is that was that Forrest is Griffin, insane. by the way. Yeah. Yes, it was. So he that was did, a light heavyweight. Yes, it was, and he did a he did a matrix elbow and knocked out a dude. Okay, in a, in a in another organization, it was like one of his very first fights. 
Okay, he did a phenomenal things, but you got busted doing something that you shouldn't have been doing. You get this mark of shame. Okay. Oh, yeah. You get that mark of shame. I'm sorry. You earned that. If you get busted for doing something that you're not supposed to do, everybody has choices in life. And you yeah. must be responsible for the choices you make. If you do wrong, you get the asterisk. Well, real quick. Mm -hmm. So so I, I totally get that standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, the year Mark McGuire won the batting uh, championship, or whatever that thing's called, I clearly know baseball, um, and it was taken away from him. Who Who's the new holder of that record? I don't know who it is. I don't follow it. Ex exactly. <laughs> Sammy Sosa, same thing. No, okay. no, it's his, Barry his Bonds, year. guys. It Barry Bonds. And and so uh, and when Barry Bonds broke too, the record he? for yeah, the home I runs, when when Barry I mean, Bonds broke the record for the home runs, the, that, that record-breaking home run that he hit, um, mm -hmm. the person who caught it gave it to the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame and put an asterisk on the ball. Wow. Hey. Yeah, but the asterisk, again, doesn't matter because the player and his legacy is the story we're still talking about. No. So what good is the asterisk? The, but the, because the asterisk, uh, it, the asterisk, uh, in my opinion, and much respect to John Jones and much respect to Anderson Silva, mm -hmm. the asterisk is necessary because when you go and you look at these accolades and you look at the fact that John Jones knocked out just or defeated just about every single – light heavyweight champion that stood before him um, and all the things that John Jones has accomplished, all the things that Anderson Silva has accomplished. And if you just look at the highlights and you just look at the stats on the sheet, it tells a story of a great mixed martial artist. Without the asterisk, then all of the things that they have done that is considered to be cheating and, and, and unsportsmanlike get swept under the rug and lost to the to the sands of time that having the asterisk on the on the record on on the profile reminds us that these are fighters who accomplished great things but also had also committed a, a, a violation that they were convicted of i i don't know the better word for that because convicted no, makes a, it, it's a very strong word but it was proven that they each had done something wrong and so that is something that i think the asterisk is a compromise so that we don't only focus on the bad things that these great warriors have done but it also is a reminder that these warriors aren't without a blemish as well when you when you compare the 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 accomplishments of an Anderson Silva to a John Jones to someone like Daniel Cormier who lacks the asterisk you have to have a way to delineate the accomplishments of someone like Daniel Cormier who is without any type of accusation of doping from someone like John Jones and Anderson Silva who both have been confirmed illegal users Well said. All right, let's move on. Speaking of USADA violations, there were four fighters who were recently suspended, two of which we know very well. Nico Montano, she was the very first 125-pound women's flyweight champion. She ended up giving up her title, and now it's being held by Valentina Shevchenko. Nico Montano and Sean O'Malley, one of K uh, KC's favorite fighters, um... They both have been suspended for six months um, for having taken um, or having popped for a an illegal substance called Osterine, and Osterine is a known um, is a known violation uh, that is in some supplements. And the USADA carries a list of seventy supplements that have been known to have Osterine in them. So the final verdict on these four fighters was that they took a supplement that had Osterine in it, and it was not an in intentional violation. Um, so they only got a six-month six month suspension. Boo. Honestly, the timing of it was suspect because I thought it was going to be a marijuana issue. Yeah, it was on 420. <laughs> 
was like, got him. Uh, yeah, I, I honestly thought yeah, when, when, when we had the, uh, in, you know, in the group, when I posted it, I thought it was marijuana. And then later on it said it was Osterine. And I was like, what? Because Sean O'Malley is like synonymous. Sean O'Malley is English for marijuana. Yes. <laughs> All right, nice. Nice. We'll- you know, we would say, you know, Gaelic for marijuana. Uh-huh. He is Irish, you know. Yeah, we could go Gaelic. But, you know. It, so here's the next thing. This is from ESPN. Sean O'Malley will make his return to the octagon against Marlon Vera at UFC 239 on July 6th. That is during International Fight Week. And so even though he was popped for Osterine, that the USADA decided to retroactively assign his punishment back to the original popping of his uh, test. So therefore, he has already served his six-month suspension, and he is eligible to fight in July. So while some of these other fighters are, are still suspended, Sean O'Malley is free and clear to get back in the octagon and start getting paid. KC, how do you feel about that? I I felt for a long time USADA is a bit of a joke. It's uh, it's there's arbitrary practices. There's, there's ah, I'm so frustrated. I can't even talk. It's a, the whole thing is <laughs> a waste of time. <laughs> it is. What's the point of what's the point of popping somebody to say, oh, it's retroactive. We'll let you slide. No, you busted them. Let yep. them serve their sentence from the day they got busted all the way through. Well, that's what happened. He from the day he got busted, which was like September nineteenth of last year. Uh, so, so what? What hap- What? What you? I, I feel like what you're really saying is, is that they need once it's decided that they have been busted and they are given their their suspension. The suspension starts when the when the penalty is assessed, and not when yes. the not when the pop and the and and the the drug test came back. Yeah, because otherwise it's, it's, you know, what happens if Sean had fought, you know, before, you know, during that alleged retroactive suspension? You know, are they going to tell him to fork over the cash that he won? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but I I, I do kind of wish that it would, you know, that that that, that was the thing, right? Like, you know, you're, 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 you're caught. You caught uh, breaking the law, and they're like, "Oh, well, you broke the law like two years ago. Um, it's only a three-year sentence, so we're just gonna, even though you broke the law, we just sentenced you today, and you're being sentenced to three years. Since you broke the law two years ago, we're only gonna make you serve the one year. Like, that's not that that's that's not how it works. No, but you know what that is, though. That's because that they're not." I don't know why isn't that they're testing they're not testing these fighters fast enough. I mean, is there something that I'm missing? Because I can remember, you know, back in the day when I used to take a blood, uh, 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 you know, a drug test. They they give they take pee in the cuff and they give you the test right there. And if it turned a certain color, well, guess what? You're fired or you're suspended. So I'm like, what's what? What am I missing? What am, um, what am I truly missing here? I'm gonna I'm gonna guess and say that. You know, whatever it is they were testing for, whether it be marijuana or some other type of um, illicit drug, it's probably easier to detect than something like Osterine. Yeah, but still, I mean, they got to be faster with this. I mean, I get it. You know, you it's got to go through strenuous testing. But, you know, the wait, oh, wait, what? It's been what? Let's see, it's September, October, November, December, January, about... Three, seven months later, six, seven months later, that you're going to say, oh, by the way, you were busted. Mm-hmm. That's 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 not fair. Yeah. That is not fair. All right, let's move on. John Fitch wants yellow cards implemented in MMA. So, you know, I'm fam- only familiar with yellow cards in, in soccer. So if you have a minor violation, you're given a, a yellow card. And if you have a major mm-hmm. violation in soccer, you're given a red card and you're asked to leave the pitch. Um, John Fitch wants to make add that to the MMA rules so that if you are um, holding, if you're taken down and you're using your jiu-jitsu to neutralize the, the progression of the wrestler on top, let's say John Fitch, um, and he's not able to move or otherwise progress his position, that the referee should be able to, according to John, give you a yellow card. 
And if you get two yellow cards or three yellow cards or something like that, then half of your purse goes to your opponent. What do you think this about feels that? Feels excessive. Not, not only is that excessive, that sounds a bit of a uh, bit of whining, okay? Yeah. Because you just got new, just because you got neutralized on the ground in pride, they did use the yellow card, red card, yellow card, red card. Yellow cards were used for eye pokes, okay? Uh, kick to the nards. Um, if you're holding onto the ropes, <laughs> you know things of like that. If you do that excessively. You know, you get you get your, your yellow card, and you do the. It's I think it was two yellow cards, then half your purse gets taken, and then your red card is a discard. The, not a red card is a is a point taken, and two red cards you're disqualified. If yeah. I remember correctly, yeah. So, so that's how I, I I totally agree with that. They should have yellow cards, red red cards in in UFC in MMA. All around. I mean, that's probably one of the best things that Pride Pride did, and I, I respect that. But not for what he's asking for. He's mad because he got neutralized. Yep. Okay. That's yeah, he's, what he's trying to change about. the change the rules so that he can take advantage of his fighting style, and people can't just neutralize him the way that uh, Rory McDonald did on Saturday night. Well, he should just go to Glory Kickboxing. Problem solved. There you go. Or he can go to a better jujitsu class. I suggest you know maybe go to Henzo Gracie's. Uh, Jiu uh, Gra- uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu in New York. I heard it's pretty good. All right, we're gonna we're gonna fire through these next three, uh, just because I wanted to call it out. Just get some 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 just some flash reactions from you guys. Ronda Rousey's bruises from WrestleMania. Those were legit bruises. Yeah, they were. It looked like new tattoos. It was it crazy. Like Did you see those, Casey? <laughs> I saw them, and it just made me think. Uh, you're really bad at falling. <laughs> wow, harsh. Um, hey. Uh, I, I came across this statistic, and, and I, was, I was proposing that maybe we should modify rule number one, which is don't bet against the Russians, given the fact that the Russians have been losing a little bit in these past few cards, to don't bet against the Dagestanis. Man, Dagestani fighters are 396 and 59. That's an 87% win percentage. That's pretty strong coming from that little region in, in, in south uh, western Russia. They are straight up gangsters. Do they wrestle bears? Okay. They wrestle bears. That's yes. why they have an eighty-seven percent win percentage. Don't bet against the Dagestanis. Um, <laughs> UFC boxing coming this fall. So that was the one thing Dana White was been teasing that something coming after the after the summer was going to be big. He was going to change the game. Looks like he's putting his uh, his hopes on UFC boxing. I think he's going to get Anthony Joshua to come to the United States. Ooh, he doesn't have enough money for that. Exactly. If he and if think about it, if he bring if he gives one boxer boxing money, like boxing money, the UFC will have a riot. He better be up in the pay of everybody on the UFC roster. If he gets Anthony Joshua, they can all pound sand. Anthony <laughs> one Anthony Johnson fight is worth five Conor McGregor's. So I, I don't know, man. If you can get if he what he was saying about UFC boxing is that what makes UFC different than the other promotions is the fact that the UFC, thanks to its structure, has been able to get the fights that people want to see. And so people want to see the fight between Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. If 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 Dana White can make that happen, if he can get Anthony Joshua to come to the United States and fight Deontay Wilder, boxing may have a second life like people might actually come out and watch a fight for once yeah but anthony's so much bigger in the uk and that's where the money's gotta be Uh, i i don't know that deontay wilder has a big enough following even outside of boxing to get a casual person in there i don't know on top of that aren't we isn't the ufc job is to prove that mixed martial arts is better than boxing that's because boxing has always treated mixed martial arts as the red-headed stepchild why are we trying to throw a hand out to save boxing number one because dana white is a boxer first and Mm -hmm. then a mixed martial artist right that's illegal that's illegal (laughs) nice um number two is because there's way more money in boxing and number three, the UFC is no longer the UFC. It, UFC is a brand, and it could be UFC smoothies, 
and and they could sell it. It's it, it's reached that level now that it transcends the mixed martial arts um, category that gave it its life. The UFC is now a a fighting brand, and so you could have UFC boxing, UFC kickboxing, UFC, UFC jiu jitsu fight kit, UFC fight kit. You know, and and that is absolutely something now that I think that it's the next logical step, given the fact that Dana White is has always loved boxing first. And then finally, last thing, Brock Lesnar is not coming back. He says he's going to stay retired. So all of our pipe dreams of seeing Daniel D.C. Cormier go out fighting Brock Lesnar in the money fight to end all money fights is not going to happen. It looks like they're going to book Stipe Miocic 2. Yep. That's, Allegedly. That, that which, seems, that's the smart play. Which means if they do indeed book Stipe Miocic 2, then I have this waiting for John. Nah. Because you said it was yeah. going to be his last fight was going to be the John Jones, John Jones. trilogy, and, and it could it, it, it could still be. So hold that sandwich. Okay? I'm gonna hold the sandwich, but I'm just Dana's letting you know that I got this to, uh, crow waiting. Dana's been known to be underhanded in saying a fight's not going to happen, and then it happens. Plus, the the Miocic thing has not been confirmed. I mean, no. we're we're working on a couple hours of information here. Yeah. The, that stuff changes real but, quick. But, but Brock Lesnar is pretty. I mean, it's been widely reported that Brock Lesnar has said that he is he is retired, and it didn't appear to me, you know, even seeing some of the things that he was doing in WWE, that he was really interested in coming back. I, I felt like that wasn't going to happen. Um, you know anyway. who's not retired? Huh? You know who's not retired? John Jones. Oh yeah. Francis Ngannou. Most of the heavyweights, like I don't, I don't know that there's a, a compelling enough event that we get Miocic again. No, it's going to be John Jones three. Trust me, there, <laughs> there, that it's the dirty mistress, dude. They can't quit each other. Okay, there's so this much is, money in that fight. It doesn't we'll even matter about the money. They, they have a natural dislike for each other, and John Jones knows that he. Can, he's in the mind of Daniel Cormier. Even if even if Daniel thinks that he can beat him at heavyweight, John Jones loves that challenge. Even though he knows in his mind that if he goes up to heavyweight, he's gonna face a different Daniel Cormier than what he faced at light heavyweight. To be honest, one, I I think that that is the only redeeming part of that story, is that if John Jones goes up to heavyweight to fight this last fight. That is the mm-hmm. only thing that I that I would be interested in seeing. I would not be interested in seeing Daniel Cormier coming back down. I want to see John Jones come up and fight that fight if he's going to fight it. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be Stipe Miocic too. We're going to ride off into the sunset with Daniel Cormier having been an undefeated heavyweight champion of the UFC. All right, that is it for finding the angles. Let's get into the second half of War Weekend with two. Pay per view, uh, no, two promotions with fights this weekend in the fight card. card. We've got two fights this weekend. We've got Bellator Birmingham featuring Brent Primus versus Tim Wilde, May 4th. 2019 at the Resorts World Arena in Birmingham, UK. Actually, it's Birmingham, not Birmingham. Uh, That's in Alabama. Uh, So Bellator Birmingham uh, has four fights on the card. you got Raymond Daniels versus Wilker Burrows, Fabian Edwards versus Falco Nito Lopez, Derek Campos versus Pedro Carvalho, and in the main event, Brett Primus versus Tim Wilde. UFC Fight Night on ESPN Plus 8, Donald the Cowboy Cerrone versus Al Iaquinta, May 4th, 2019 at the Canadian Tire Center in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And I want to say shout out to my, my, my friends in Canada. Canadian Tires is the best place to go to get poutine. Just want to shout that out. Yeah. Huh. Uh, Canadian Tire for poutine. Yes. Yes, there is a chip truck 
in the parking lot of the Canadian Tire in Ottawa. You go there, you get yourself some poutine. It is the best. The locals tell you it is the best, man. I've had okay. it. All right, you got six fights on the card. Mark andre Berrio versus Andrew Sanchez. Walt Harris is back versus Sergey Spivak. You got Mirab Divishali versus Brad Katona. Shane Burgos versus Cub Swanson. I'm glad to see that dude, that dude back. I'm just so happy to see him back. Derek Brunson is coming off of his loss versus Israel Adesanya. Uh, he's fighting Elias Theodoro. Elias. Thank you so much. Elias Theodoro, the Spartan. And in the main event of the evening, you got Al Iaquinta versus Donald the Cowboy Cerrone. So we're going to do some flash fight picks here. Let's go with Shane Burgos versus Cub Swanson. John, who do you have? Uh, I have Cub. Um, it's good to see him back. He's fresh off of injuries. He looks and you know he looks to take a win. So I'm gonna give it to him. All right, the Nostril Damas. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fly that uh, blue and white W banner. All right, I, I see what you're doing there. This, that, yeah, that cryptic uh, <laughs> cryptic answer is uh, much more much better than the last time. <laughs> I have you go back and pick Derek Brunson versus Elias Theodoro. Who you got? Um, running it back, I'm I'm, I'm just gonna go with uh, Derek Brunson on this one. Okay. All right, John. Yeah, I'll go Derek Brunson on this one as well. All right. Um, in the, I, I didn't make the pick for for the last fight. I'm going with Cub as well. In this one, I'm gonna go with Elias Theodoro. Uh, you know what? I met that guy. He was super nice. I'm gonna go with that guy. Again, you're supposed to pick who's going to win, not who you want to win. Hey, listen. Exactly. Listen, you pick who's going to win. <laughs> I pick whoever I want. Uh, uh, I, I can't go to Vegas with you. I refuse. No. You know what was funny? Uh, my cousin gave me a call uh, last week uh, for the uh, Alistair Overeem fight. Um, Alistair Overeem versus uh, Oleonek. And he's mm-hmm. calling me. He's like, hey, who's going to win that fight? And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, you do the podcast, right? So who's going to win the fight? Alistair Overeem versus Andre Olianek or whatever his name is. And I'm like, okay, first of all, never listen to whatever I pick because I'm always wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I said, so if you have any money that you're planning on betting, don't do it. You will lose your money. But if you want a hot tip from me, I'm going with Olianek. And you saw how that turned out. Olianek got knocked out in the first round. I pick who I want, not who's going to win. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, uh, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel bad for Al Iaquinta because that's who I'm picking. I got Al Iaquinta wow. in the main event. I think he's going to put Donald Cerrone out. Um, I don't see that happening. I see. I'm gonna. We're gonna see if if Donald Cerrone shows up. The Donald Cerrone that we've seen the past couple of fights. Yeah, it's gonna be a long night for uh, Al Alquinta. I, I give. I give it to Cerrone one more time. Oh, I'm going Al Alquinta by split decision. All really, right. Like neither of these guys have great uh, defense, and it's just gonna be an all offensive battle. But Ally Quinta's ability to stick in there with just fights that sh- he should be out of his league, like you just can't put it past him to just be able to grind his way to a win. It's that Chris Weidman. He's got that Chris Weidman as his coach. Uh, oh, that, that makes me that want to change it. Sarah Let me Longo this to Camp. <laughs> <laughs> like Al Quinta, dude sells real estate. Comes in, whoops people in the octagon. I got Al Iaquinta. That's my dude. All right. You know, he's coming out of Sarah Longo, and you really got to – It's one, Sarah Longo is one of those gyms that you just got to love to hate, okay? And, I mean, and, I've, and I listen to their podcast occasionally because, you know, you got to listen to the enemy to, to understand their intelligence. And, you know, I, I, I laugh at their stuff, but I just hate Chris Weidman with a passion. It makes no sense. That's my confession. All I right. just don't like what Thank he did you, to Usher. Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, hey, follow us on social media on Twitter. I'm at CST Ryan. John? 
Oh, and I'm at Keys to Victory. <laughs> On like, Instagram, I, I am at Combat Sports Talk, John. And I am at Keys to Victory. And KC. And I am at Push Pull Pray. Is that the one where you show all the pictures of like, Every Canada week. or uh, no, Colorado? No, that would be Unfettered Joy. Oh, is that the one where you show all the pictures of like the cooking and stuff that you do? Uh, no, that would be Purposeful Dinners. Oh, is that the one where you show you standing off looking at things with your dog and like some picture? <laughs> no, that would be Obfuscated with an A instead of an A. All right. Yeah. Or you can check out our website at www.combatsportstalk.com. Um, you can find us on any podcasting platform. My favorite is uh, Apple uh, Podcasts and Spotify, but you can find us on Anchor.fm. You can find us on uh, Spreaker, Stitcher, every one of them. Um, we also have merchandise. Go to our webpage and check out, click our merchandise link. You can get yourself a cool Combat Sports Talk tee. And we do live events, but guess what, guys? I am going to be out of town again for the next pay-per-view. So what? I will have missed uh, 2.30. Was it 2.36? And oh, I'm going to be missing 2.37. Way back when you were in, what, fourth grade was the last time you were 2.36. <laughs> and yeah. thank you and good night. Yeah, you know, and the, fun, the funny thing is, is that even though I was 236 in fourth grade, I was still taller than you are today. So, <laughs> oh, you got mad jokes. Uh, <laughs> With so, the Spice was, Adams laugh, okay. It was <laughs> birthday last weekend, people. So, if you haven't sent them any birth, any well wishes, go ahead and slap them with that belated well wish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I turned the the. I, my age is equivalent to the to the meaning of life and everything. And your waist size. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, Anthony Johnson. I mean, Anthony uh, Lionheart Smith. <laughs> get his Smith. name right. <laughs> I'll fight Anthony Johnson all day. I Wait, don't think one. that. Okay. No, I don't Wait, think you Anthony will. Johnson, we talking about? Because I'm pretty sure Anthony Smith knows Anthony Johnson. They go in the same yeah, circles. I don't want that smoke. Call me the airport <laughs> laboratory because I want no smoke. <laughs> <laughs> that one's good. Let's end that one on that. Our theme music is composed by Scott McCurry at scottdeancountry.com. KC Onyebuchi produced our lead-ins. I want to thank you for joining us for another edition of Combat Sports Talk. For KC Onyebuchi and John Keyes, I'm Ryan Smith reminding you to keep your hands up, keep your chin tucked, and throw bombs.